Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, breaking news. Uganda has just passed an LGBT law criminalizing all those who identify as LGBT. Greetings in the name of the Most High, Emperor Haile Selassie I the First. Ladies and gentlemen, you know I'm Rastafari, soldier of Deep Roots TV. And if this is your first time tuning in, I'm asking you hit that red subscribe button. And we are going to have a great relationship, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Deep Roots TV. And if this is your first time tuning in, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. I'm asking you, share the content, leave your comment, ladies and gentlemen. The Ugandan government has approved one of the world's most harsh anti-gay laws on Tuesday. According to the punishment of anyone caught identified as LGBT or in act of relating to this punishable by death or being imprisoned for the maximum of 20 years. The new law represents a future crackdown on a further crackdown on LGBTQ person in the nation where same sex relationship were previously forbidden and subject to life sentence in prison. It forbid a variety of actions, including conspiracy to participate in homosexuality act and assisting in the spread of homosexuality. The measure state that indicated shows incident involving aggravated homosexuality, which is phrase used to describe a wide range of sex acts carried out against minors, those with physical or mental impairment by a serial offender or involved incest can result in death sentence by an appeal. A member of parliament, Musa Ikuwa, stated in parliament addressed that their aim was to protect their morals and culture. He went further to say that the law was made for themselves as adults, their children, and the generation that would follow. He also affirmed that the country would not waver in reinforcing the law and making sure that homosexuals had no place in the country. As I have a video here, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the United States of America stated that they are now threatening to pull AIDS from Uganda. The White House threatened to pull aid to Uganda over the anti-LGBT bill. I'm going to let you hear the video here from the parliament. And it appears that the entire Ugandan parliament is in agreement with the bill. So I don't understand how come the United States is threatening Uganda for making a bill for themselves. Listen to the video of the parliament. In our country, we will have our morals, we will protect our children. And we are making this law, we are making this law for ourselves, we are making this law for our children, we are making this law for the children of our children. This country will stand firm. And once it passed, I can tell you, Madam Speaker, we are going to reinforce the law enforcement officers to make sure that homosexuals have no space in Uganda. Now, this is, this is the uh, opposition party. It's not the party that's in, and they're introducing it, Bill. And it appears to have a bipartisan agreement and the this people law, of We are Uganda. making this law for ourselves. We are making this law for our children. We are making this law for the children of our children. This country will stand firm. And once it passed, I can tell you, Madam Speaker, we are going to reinforce the law enforcement officers to make sure that homosexuals have no space in Uganda. Now, as you see, there is a unified parliament on this particular bill, ladies and gentlemen. And like I said, the states, the White House, the United States have threatened to pull aid 
to Uganda over the anti-LGBT bill. So I'm asking the fans, the subscribers, the Africans of the world, the island people of the world, the melanation of the world, to let me know if this is, you know, basically state terrorism when the United States do these kind of things, when they force the hand of certain people to accept their lifestyle or their cultural way. The White House is warning that the proposed Ugandan bill that would outlaw identifying as LGBT could threaten the U.S. aid to the African country. John Kirby, coordinator of strategic communication of the National Security Council, said Wednesday that if the law passes, the Biden administration would consider potentially re recouping or perhaps even stop sending aids or economic assistance their way. That would be really unfortunate because so much of the economy assistance we provide Uganda is health assistance, Kirby said at press briefing. Help, hopefully it won't pass and he won't have to do anything. The United States provides more than $950 million in aid to Uganda each year, according to the State Department. The money supports development and health care measures such as combating HIV AIDS. Uganda is already among 30 African countries that has been banned same-sex relations. The new proposal would broaden potential penalties and appear to be the first to outlaw identifying as LGBT according to Human Rights Watch. The legislation which passed Ugandan Parliament on Tuesday originally imposed up to 10 years in prison for homosexual offense, but the new version pushed through at the last minute carried the death penalty for what is described as aggravated homosexual offense involving minors, other vulnerable people, and life in prison for the offense of homosexuality. A person convicted of attempted aggravated homosexuality faced 14 years behind bars. The proposed law would declare all same-sex conduct, non counselor criminal same-sex marriage, and make it illegal to conduct a marriage ceremony between people of the same sex. It would also threaten prosecution and imprisonment for people that isolated or identify including the media the distribute and conduct of advocating gay rights or promotes homosexuality according to the BBC supports of the law say it is needed to push a broad array of LGBT activities away from the culture of the African tradition, values, and the religion of the country. This country will stand firm, and once it is passed, I can tell you, Madam Speaker, we are going to reinforce the law enforcement officers to make sure that homosexuals have no space in Uganda. Musa Ikiwe a member of the Ugandan parliament said as the bill was considered, Human Rights Watch urged Ugandan lawmakers to withdraw the proposal. The criminalization of cons conceal or I'm sorry, consensual same-sex conduct contribute to the climate in which violence and discrimination against LGBT people is widespread. The non-governmental organization said the bill still required the signature of President Yoweri Museveni, Museveni to become law. Although he hasn't commented on this specific legislation, Museveni has previously supported anti-LGBTQ measures. Museveni signed a previous law that had toughened laws against the LGBT community by Ugandan Constitution Court nullifying it in 2014 solely because it passed Parliament without a required quorum. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said that Biden's administration has grave concern about what would be the most extreme anti-gay 
law in the world. If the bill is signed into law and exacted, enacted, it would infringe on universal human rights, jeopardize progress in the fight against HIV, against the ter terrorism and investments in Uganda and damage Ugandan international reputation, she said no one should be attacked, imprisoned, or killed simply because of who he or she, whom they love. Secretary of State Antony Blinken also commented on the proposal Wednesday on Twitter. The Anti-Homosexual Act, um, Act passed by the Ugandan parliament yesterday would undermine fundamental human rights of all Ugandan and could reverse gains in the fight against homosexual um, AIDS and HIV, Blinken wrote. We urge the Ugandan government to strongly reconsider the implementation of this legislation. The State Department has said that Ugandan has experienced relative political stability and economical growth under Museveni, who came to power in 1986 but still face significant human rights, government, and democracy deficits. According to 2022 State Department of Sheet, Uganda is reliable partner of the United States in promoting stability and combating terrorism in the region. Kirby said Tuesday that United States foreign policy support expanding human rights throughout the world. We are never going to shy away or be bashful about speaking up for those rights and for individuals to live as they deem fit, as they want to live, he said. And that something that's a core part of our foreign policy and it will remain so. Now, if you hear what's in these articles here, basically the United States is threatening an African nation to withdraw money from them because the government, the parliament, and the people has decided against certain lifestyle that is culturally European. You see, a great man once said, when you accept the culture of another nation, then you are truly enslaved. And because this is a Greco-Roman culture, I'm speaking of homosexuality, because of the money and the strength and the strong arm of the United States, whenever another nation decide that because of their cultural, because of their religious, because of their cleanliness, because of, because of their courage or any quorum or decor, why they choose not to mix and mingle in homosexuality, it becomes a threat financially, econom economically. And you hear they're speaking about there has been a fight against HIV and AIDS. So what they're saying that, you know, if you, if you pass this law, there's going to be a spike in that area. But they don't look at the point that by Ugandan lawmakers out, are making that illegal. They are also pushing a fight against those kind of diseases. So ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to bring this to the forefront and, you know, ask your opinion. What you think about this? Do you think that Uganda has the right or is correct on this? Or do you think that the United States have the right to impose embargoes, bans? Basically, they're blackmailing other countries with their money to accept their lifestyle and their cultural philosophy. Now, of course, Jean, you know, Jean Pierre is going to say, you know, it's wrong because, of course, she herself is a part of that you know, LGBTQ or STU team. So it's no, it's no bashing or anything like that of anyone, but it's having the right as a country to have, to have the right to choose as a nation because democracy is supposed to be uh, majority rule. So if the majority of the parliament and the majority of the people decide that, you know, they don't want that lifestyle 
in their country, I think that, you know, the United States should not blackmail the people them or the country by telling them that, you know, if you push through this law, then we are not going to send you no more money. So, I want you to chime in upon this particular topic. You are going to give thanks for watching it. Subscribe, like, and share if you have not subscribed as yet, my families and friends. I do have a couple more topics to talk about. So, you know, I'm going to kind of switch out the title them and allow some of my families and friends them to see a thing to you, you know, say. Big up on yourself, subscribe, like, and share. Yeah, man, big up Deep Woods TV, Cash and Sessa. Big up Deep Woods TV. Yo, this one is for the youths. Yeah, you're watching Deep Roots. I know you're cute. Deep Roots TV. <laughs> big up Deep Roots TV. Shout out to Deep Roots, bro. Shout out to Deep Roots TV. Tune in to Deep Roots TV. Log in, subscribe, online, YouTube. Get there or be square. Jack Webby said that. Log on to Deep Roots TV. All right, my families and friends, you know how the systems work. Me actually want to speak about, you know, Cambridge and the rubber worm got through the other day. So, bear with me a second. Let me just click this off. Yeah, the dancehall artist Cambridge. 